Hi, I'm Cindy Sheehan, and this is my first vlog, my first video blog. And I am poor, so this is being recorded from my MacBook Air in my living room in a house somewhere in Vacaville, California. I hope that this is syncing okay and it's working okay and it can you can hear it and also it's being uh, edited by volunteer help my friend John Gold is going to edit it and post it and so of course there's no lighting man there's no hair or makeup it's just me and it's just what I say so um, here we go and I hope that this works out um, pretty well. I'm going to be recording why did that stop? Anyway, you know, here I'm at home and you know people might walk in the door and stuff might happen and like it looked like it stopped recording there for a minute, maybe because I wasn't moving, but we'll see how this works. I'll be recording some articles and some thoughts uh, that I have and post posting it to my YouTube channel, which is called CindyTube. So let's get started. This one is called What About Obama? And so it could be What About Obama or What About Obama? I'll be reading a uh, piece I just wrote. I believe that a woman's right to reproductive freedom over her own body is an important issue and a human right. I believe that marriage freedom and equality is another important issue and another human right. At the risk of offending some people, but when has that ever stopped me? It never has and it never will. Maybe some people need to be offended. I don't think those issues come near to being fundamental key issues. These and other issues aren't called wedge for nothing. These issues are designed to drive that proverbial wedge between us down here in the 99%. And instead of the GOP calling for Kevin Aiken, you know, the legitimate rape dude, to throw in the towel, the 1% should be giving him some kind of medal for pounding that wedge in even more deeply. And actually, between the two major parties, the presidential candidates have stated pretty similar positions in the past on abortion rights and gay marriage. It's the things that Obama and Romney agree on what are what frighten me and should frighten you. Um, I'm not going to elaborate on every single thing they agree on, but Bruce A. Dixon from the Black Agenda Report just wrote an article and posted it on the Black Agenda Report today called Closer Than You Think, the top 15 things that Romney and Obama agree on, and I would suggest you go to the Black Agenda Report to um, check that out. Anyway, Obama is no common man, and he may not be worth as much as Romney, but how many of you have $12 million in assets? Also, Obama has protected Goldman Sachs and John Corzine's MF Global, and in fact, John Corzine from prosecution, and it's ironic, or, oops, Is it ironic or synchronous that while in Charlotte, North Carolina this week, Obama will accept the nomination of his party at Bank of the America Stadium? Obama has not been good for jobs, the economy, or workers since he took the helm of this rusty and leaky ship of state. Please don't tell me about obstructionist Republicans. Obama had a huge majority of Democrats in the Senate and House, House in the first two years of his term. It seems that would have been time to fulfill empty campaign rhetoric. That is, it, that is, if it was anything more than empty campaign rhetoric. Obama has increased military spending since he became, became Commander-in-Chief of U.S. Armed Forces. He's increased troops to Afghanistan by treble. And he has also increased the use of unmanned aerial vehicles or drones and Hellfire missile bombings by over 500% over his predecessor, George Bush. I am sure that if Mitt becomes president, those things will continue. 
But like under Bush and every Republican before him since Roe v. Wade was um, decided by the Supreme Court, Roe, Roe v. Wade won't be overturned. Besides Obama bombing Libya, Somalia, Yemen, Afghanistan, Pakistan, etc., use of a kill list and executing Americans without the due process that's guaranteed to us under the Bill of Rights, the thing that upsets me the most about his regime and the Democrats in general is not only the refusal to hold the Bush regime accountable for war crimes and crimes against humanity, but how Obama's DOJ, Department of Justice, protects them while persecuting people like me for being a war tax resistor and people like Bradley Manning, an alleged whistleblower, and we are trying to stop the war crimes. Recently, two significant things happened. The first one is Obama's Department of Justice dropped yet another persecution or prosecution against war crimes, which happened under the Bush stain, this time for the deaths of detainees in custody due to torture by the CIA. Of course, Eric Holder's job seems to be to protect criminals, not prosecute them, protect real criminals. Then, Nobel Peace Prize winner Archbishop Desmond Tutu came out in favor of Bush and his poodle, Tony Blair, being at The Hague for the war in Iraq. Of course, I've been calling for that for eight years, not just me, a lot of other people. However, accountability is personal to me. I want justice for my son's death and the death of over one million others. At, you know, at the hands of the Bush administration and um, Blair's Great Britain. However, I'm just a Nobel Peace Prize reject, and I wouldn't stop there. The Nobel laureate Obama has carried on the war crimes of the U.S. war machine, and his administration should be brought up on charges, too. I am running for Vice Presidency of the United States, not because I think Bar Sheehan 2012 will be very serious and we will go to D.C. and we will clean house there, but we would. I am running to challenge some very cores of the mythocracy of this country. That, for example, that there is a difference between the Democrats and Republicans, or that elections matter or are even legitimate. Unfortunately, we will not be able to vote ourselves out of this mess we are in, and socialist revolution is the only way out. I have seen socialist revolution in action in other countries, and I know we could do it if we wanted to. It will just take a little more sacrifice than going a few doors down on election day to cast your vote for more war, more economic more economic oppression, and more environmental devastation, for example. I encourage you, hi, <laughs> I encourage you to vote for life, vote for socialism, vote for Bar Sheehan of the Peace and Freedom Party in November, and then after the elections, roll up your sleeves for the hard but rewarding work ahead. Peace out for now. I'm Cindy Sheehan.